Emma D here, Deanna, homemaker, homesteader, homeschool mom of six, making my next recipe in my Betty Crocker cookbook series, uh, Cooking Through the Betty Crocker Picture Cookbook from 1950. We're on the Easy Confections for Children, which is the first section, but I'm super excited because uh, I have turned the page. So I've already made the first recipes in this book. Uh, Elsie's Nougat Bars, Wheaties Tinglings, Peanut Squares, Caramel Apples, Chocolate Coconut Drops, and Molasses Patties. And now I'm going to the next page. So today is Chocolate Fudge. So we'll get started with that and then we'll read a little bit about the meal planning tips that they wrote in this book. But we'll start with the fudge. So it says to place over low heat, stirring until chocolate is melted and the mixture is smooth. One cup of milk. And two ounces of unsweetened chocolate. I'll have to let that melt. So I guess I'll get started on the meal planning tips while that's melting before we go to the next part of this recipe. So meal planning. Check your daily meals for appropriateness, appearance, satisfaction, nutrition, and cost. Smart homemakers say, planning, preparing, and serving meals is an art, which develops through inspiration and thought. And meal planning is really fun. It may look difficult to the beginner, but like driving a car, swimming, or anything we learn to do without thought or conscious effort, it is a skill which grows easier with the doing. It is important to plan a variety of foods for well-balanced meals to keep your family well nourished. But above all, be sure those meals are appetizing, attractive, and delicious to eat. For meal time should help build a happy home life. And here's some quotes from the smart homemakers. My meals are more nutritious since I've been planning them ahead. I check in advance the basic foods and the daily needs of my family. Planning meals ahead helps me to save time and energy. I have made the cooking of meals a pleasure and a study rather than a job. And so I enjoy planning each day's menus. My meals are more interesting since I have started planning ahead because I avoid repetition and plan for variety in color, texture, and flavor. So, number one on the list, appropriateness. Cut your meal pattern to fit your situation, the occasion, and the family needs. Smart homemakers say, I always remember birthday and holidays with a special dessert or color scheme. Now that's something I can be better about. I was actually just thinking about it because Valentine's Day was a few days ago. And um, I don't really do a lot to mark these occasions. And I've heard some good ideas like, I don't know, even just using a special plate or something like that. You don't necessarily have to go all out. But of course I get every want a little gift, but um, it might be fun to mark occasions um, with a little more how to draw attention to that it is a special day. So that's something that's been on my mind. If you have any ideas of little things you do, because I'm just not one to go all out for these minor holidays. <laughs> Matter of fact, a lot of times I'm not one to do anything. So anyways, if you have any ideas 
for little ways you mark these holidays and celebrate these little occasions throughout the year, uh, leave them in the comment section. Give me some ideas and maybe some other people that watch uh, could be inspired by those ideas as well. So anyways, <laughs> appropriateness. Uh, smart homemakers say, I plan the meals to be helpful for the children first and then interesting to adults without cooking separate menus. We have a five room bungalow with limited dining space and no help at all. This requires simplicity and informality. I plan my meals with the needs of my young son in mind. I never cook separately for him, but prepare simple foods appropriate for him and then dress them up for grown up tastes and add to the menu to meet adult needs. attractively for greater appetite appeal. To think each meal out in detail so there will be color appeal as well as good eating. Uh, when I was a child my father used to say we should feast the eye as well as the appetite and it has become a tradition with me. In my kitchen windows I have many plants and I alternate them in decorating the table at meal time. Okay number three satisfaction. General Satisfaction. Good cooking and seasoning. Right combinations of foods. Follow tested recipes carefully. Something soft and something crisp should always go together. And something hot with something cold no matter what the weather. Something bland needs the complement of something with tang and nip. Follow these rules and all your meals will have taste, appeal, and zip. And smart homemakers say, I use a variety of seasonings, sage, thyme, marjoram, flavored salts, and I keep pots of fresh parsley and chives. I always try to have a crisp vegetable with a definite shape with one that is creamed or mashed. Number four, nutrition. Serve a wide variety of foods. Balance meals by including the foods from the seven basic food groups. Talked about the seven basic food groups in the last video, which was uh, making molasses patties, and that was the tips I read during that video. Breakfast should give about a third of the day's food supply. Smart homemakers say, I have a list of menus for balanced meals, which is a helpful guide in ensuring good nutrition in my meals. I have a chart of how much vitamins, minerals, and proteins each member of my family needs according to age and activity. I've always tried to balance meals for the whole day. If some factor of the basic seven is left out of a meal, I get it into one of the other two. And five, cost. A food budget will help you. Buy the basic food needs for the family first. Buy less of the more expensive foods and more of the less expensive foods. Grow your own fruits and vegetables if possible. Smart homemakers say, we buy the foods we must have for good nutrition first. Then if we feel we can spend more, we buy the things that are not so important, but give our meals a lift. I find a semi-monthly budget economical because bulk buying of staples is a worthwhile saving. And if funds are budgeted over longer periods, I can take advantage of sales and special values. I've always had to consider the cost, but have learned to manage by buying in season, taking advantage of sales and by raising quantities of vegetables, which we eat in abundance in the summer and can for winter use. Okay, so this is all melted. I got it stirred together. Well, So to this, I'm supposed to add two cups of sugar. And a 
a teaspoon of corn syrup. And a dash of salt. Let's stir that. And then I'm supposed to cook this to 236 degrees over, so it just says gently, it doesn't give me a temperature. I'm just going to leave it on about medium. And I will be cooking it to 232 degrees. Um, I cook it to 232 degrees to adjust for my altitude, which I've talked about in previous candy making videos. Uh, you want your temperature when you're candy making to be extremely accurate, so you need to adjust for your altitude. Because water, and therefore candy, uh, will boil at a different temperature depending on what your altitude is. So that is why that's important. Okay, so the next thing they talk about in this book is garnishes um, and it says it's the finish that counts it may only be a ruffle of lettuce to set off a salad a bunch of purple grapes for an accent note on a platter of roast chicken or a few tiny pimento bells to add color to a bowl of oyster stew at christmas time whatever the finishing touch be sure to make it just as good to eat as it is to see Best garnishes are simple too. Each should add contrast of shape, color, crispness, or flavor to the food it adorns. Notice the finishing touches suggested in many of our recipes and shown in the color pictures in this book and in magazines. Take time to add that one little frill that can bring out color and appetite appeal of a special dish. Here are a few examples. We're at 106, so we got a ways to go. Okay, a few simple examples. For fruit cups, just before serving, top with a whole berry, a sprig of mint, a dip of fruit, ice, or sherbet. Tint syrup a delicate color. Set sherbet cup on a decorative leaf. For soups, just before serving, top with a spoonful of salted whipped cream, minced parsley, chives, Pimento, etc. may be added. A sprinkling of minced parsley, chives, watercress, or fresh herbs. A thin slice of lemon or julienned vegetables. For fish, surround fish on a platter with lemon wedges or slices sprinkled with parsley, minced pimento, paprika, minced green pepper. Bright orange slices or grapefruit sections, thick slices of cucumber, tomato slices typed with tomato slices, topped with thin slices of lemon and stuffed olive. To garnish vegetables, combine contrasting colors, red beets and green Brussels sprouts, yellow carrots and green peas. Combine contrasting shapes, carrot strips and round peas, little round onions with slivered beans. Sprinkle grated cheese on white cauliflower, Sprinkle sieved, hard-cooked eggs on asparagus, broccoli, or spinach. All you have to do to make flower garnishes for meats, shape daffodils from carrot curls and slices like petals. Turnips can be cut to form daffodils or calla lilies, etc. Some examples for meats. Surround meat on a platter with broiled fruits, p 
pink cinnamon apples with pork, stuffed black prunes with pork, slices of orange decorated with watercress or parsley with duck, bunches of red, green, or purple grapes with chicken, molded cranberry cutouts on orange slices with turkey and chicken, canned pear halves filled with green mint jelly with lamb, spiced peach halves and watercress with ham, sauteed mushroom caps with steak, French fried onion rings with steak, glazed onions and buttered carrot strips with beef, tiny scooped out tomatoes filled with hor horseradish with a pot roast. To garnish salads, add at the last minute sprays of watercress, mint, or parsley, thin strips of pimento or green pepper. Cream cheese balls may be rolled in nuts or chives. Prunes, dates, figs, or cherries stuffed with seasoned cream cheese or nuts. To garnish desserts, top plain puddings with whole or sliced fresh berries or cherries. Cubes of bright colored gelatin. Surround creamy or frozen desserts with bright colored fresh fruits or berries. Decorate dessert plates with clusters of berries or grapes, ivy or grape leaves, a single fresh flower, a ring of berries at the base of a sherbet glass. We are bubbling. Okay, we're at 152. So we'll take a little break. We'll come back when we're at about 230. Okay, so we're up to 232 degrees. So I'm going to take this off. And now I'm supposed to stir in two tablespoons of butter. After I stir this butter in, I'm supposed to let it cool to lukewarm without stirring. So it's just gonna sit here to lukewarm and I didn't really like how non-specific that was. So I had to go Google what is lukewarm. And I saw between 98 and 105, and then I also saw between 105 and 115. So I'm just gonna go with 100 degrees. So we have to let this cool. Um, so I was gonna say, I was telling you how I adjust um, the cooking temperature because of my altitude. So I'm going to tell you how I adjust my candy temperature for my altitude. And it would also work um, if your thermometer is off. So either way, it'll help you get uh, accurate cooking temperature on your candy. So anyways, what you do is you take the thermometer that you're going to use and you put it in boiling water and you see what temperature that water is boiling at. Now water at sea level boils at 212 degrees and that is what they develop these recipes based on. So if your thermometer either says say 208 degrees like mine does in the boiling water um, or it could say higher uh, just depending on your altitude and the thermometer. So you want to adjust the temperature that you're cooking it to accordingly. So mine says 208, which is four degrees less. So I cook my candy to four degrees less than what the recipe states. Now if it was four degrees higher, uh, then I would cook it to four degrees higher. But mine is four degrees lower, so the recipe called for 236, and I cooked it to 232. So that's how you get accurate temperature on your candy making. Okay, so and today, so another thing I wanted to mention, today I just made your regular chocolate fudge, or I am making the regular chocolate fudge. Now there's two variations of this fudge. There's white 
fudge and there's panucci which is made with brown sugar and the white fudge is just made with white sugar and no chocolate um i don't i wasn't planning on making those recipes um so if you want to see me make the variation leave a comment in the comment box and i will make it but what i'm going to do as i go through this cookbook is um there's so many recipes and then many of the recipes have a variation well i'm just going to make the basic recipe and then i will make the variations if they are requested so today i made the chocolate fudge but if you would like to see the white fudge or the panucci just leave me a comment and i will make that as well if not then the next time i'll be making cream caramels but so today right now we're just letting this cool and it's only um, to 208 degrees so it's probably going to have to sit here for a little while so we'll take another break and we'll come back when this has cooled to lukewarm okay so we have cooled down to about 105 degrees so it's lukewarm so now I'm supposed to stir in vanilla and it says uh, a cup of nuts optional I'll tell you it's not optional you have to put the nuts in there there's uh, no such thing as optional nuts in fudge. There we go. Uh, so a teaspoon of vanilla and a cup of broken nuts, if desired. Well, if desired. So I'm gonna stir this up, and then I'm supposed to put it in a buttered pan. stiffer than I thought it would be you know I've never actually okay I can't say never I think I attempted it if you watched one of the very first videos I was talking about uh, candy making and how I never really had success with recipes that involve a candy thermometer which has not been the case since I started this so that's great um, it's actually something I only tried a few times as a newlywed, and I've hardly ever tried since then. Um, but I think having an accurate thermometer made a big difference there, um, so I haven't had any trouble. But anyway, so usually when I make fudge, it's more the variety where you like melt chocolate chips and mix in marshmallow cream. You know, there there's no boiling of sugar and milk involved especially to a precise temperature so um but this looks like it's going to turn out really good so now i'm supposed to put it in a buttered pan i lined it with foil and buttered the foil so i'm going to put that in there and then i'm supposed to let it cool before i cut it you can see how thick it is Smells delicious. Definitely. Kids are going to be super excited. They've been loving this series that I'm doing. Because I don't make candy very often. I actually don't cook with sugar a lot. So, yeah, they've been, they've been thinking they've gone to heaven with all these sweet treats. chocolate fudge with nuts I'll probably have to have a bit of myself so there it is in the pan now I'm supposed to put it in the I think it says ref 
refrigerate. Okay, so you had two options. One was to turn it onto wax paper and shape into a 12 inch roll and then chill that and then slice it. And then the other option was to spread in a buttered pan and cut into squares. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge for a little bit before I cut it. Okay, so these have chilled. Uh, hopefully enough. We'll see. We're gonna try to cut them. Just gonna flip them out here and peel off the foil. It might be a little sticky. It'll be Cutting fine, uh, maybe could have been chilled a little bit longer, but it will do. I'm not the best cutter. <laughs> These are a little bit uneven. The kids won't even care. Delicious. <laughs> okay, so I'll give a little taste test. See what I think. So good. I love fudge. I don't know, everybody likes fudge. I definitely have a sweet tooth, so fudge is one of my favorite candies. I usually make it um, always at Christmas. I don't usually make it any other time. I rarely have it any other time. If I have it any other time, maybe I buy it um, at a little specialty shop or something like that as a treat, but I rarely have it. So this is a yummy recipe. It was pretty easy. Uh, it took a little while, mostly the, um, the cooking took a little bit of time, but the cooling, waiting for it to cool to lukewarm, you know, that took quite a bit of time, but that doesn't really matter because you can be doing other things while it's doing that. So. Very good, highly recommend. Thank you for watching. Um, be sure to subscribe if you liked this video. Um, I'll be making more, I just started cooking through this cookbook, so you can go on the journey with me. We got a couple more confection recipes before we get to the next section. So uh, next week it'll be 
cream caramels. So hit the notification so you can get notified when I make new videos and then you can, you'll be able to see that. And that's all. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.